Boy, I don't know what to think about that introduction. I'm a little worried now. <laughs> it's so awesome to be with you guys. Um, my family and I um, were brought to this beautiful church of New Life Church about a year and a half ago, and you guys have opened your arms and just blessed us, and you continue to do so. And it's just... Um, Gosh, with humility and just honor that I get to be here with you guys tonight. I thank you so much. Um, Sarah and Jessica asked me several months back if I would be willing to pray about speaking tonight. And um, I just come before you with what God has kind of laid on my heart during that time. I'd like to share a little bit of my story first. I grew up in the church. I came to a saving faith in Jesus Christ when I was 12 years old. And my journey as I left for college was a zigzag path of God pulling me back in as I veered off the path and pulling me back in again. That continued on into my years of work after college. I look back now and I call those years my reckless years. As I look back, I see his amazing protection, his grace, and most of all, his mercy over me. Um, after marriage and children, I would say that I lived in a place of the check-the-box faith. I attended church every week. I did Bible studies. But my walk was complacency. It was lukewarm at its best. Hmm. I look back and I praise him for what he has um, pulled me through and the grace he's given me. Um, I had not been obedient to him or to his call or his purpose in my life. As I was praying about what I wanted to speak to you about this evening, I kept coming back to one of the places that God took me in my journey. It was a place that God transformed my thinking, and I felt like he was encouraging me to share that with you. Let me ask you this. Who is God? Well, is that a loaded question or what? We could spend weeks here exhausting and never exhausting who God is. In my journey, I've realized that what I had studied in the words of my beautiful Bible about who God is had not been processed into permanent files in my mind, in my heart, or in my spirit. That's when I was introduced to the attributes of God. The attributes of God are simply God's characteristics, or to put it another way, the definition of God and who he is. Ladies, that's what I'd like for us to spend a little time in tonight, is the attributes of God. You see, I realized that my life revolved for the most part around me and my little universe. My day did not start with who God is. It started with what can you do for me, God? As I started to study the attributes of God, it was overwhelming to see all that he is. Do we really ever see all that he is? No. We can never, as humans, completely and fully understand who he is. But he gives us enough in his beautiful word to believe in who he is and to trust in the truths and promises he's giving us. So I wish I had time to go over every one of these attributes on our list tonight. That we might be there here till tomorrow morning and I bet you didn't pack your goodie bag for the night, did you? Um, Pastor Nick talked about the attributes, as Jessica said this weekend. He talked about love and the, and the attribute that Jesus showed us of God and his love for us. It was an incredible message. God is not just loving. God is love. He's the definition of love. So we're going to do a few things with these attributes tonight. I hope you can bear with me. When I was trying to figure this out, I really kind of came back to, I just need to tell you my process and how I've worked through the attributes of God. We're going to pick one. We're going to define it. So I picked creator. 
let's define it. There never was a time when God did not exist. Before there was anything at all, even time, God existed. No one made him. God made everything from the tiniest atomic particle to the farthest galaxy in our universe. Everything comes from God. What we can see and what we cannot see, heaven, angels, the whole spiritual realm, he spoke and all those things came into existence. God alone is able to bring something out of nothing. So then once I define an attribute, I move forward in God's word. And I'm sorry, I left my Bible sitting over there in my bag. But I look in the back of my Bible at my concordance. Most Bibles have that. And you can look up an attribute. And you can see where we find that attribute rise from the word of God. You can use your phones too, ladies. You can Google that attribute and it'll give you a million verses that has that um, particular attribute in it. So let's look at some verses. I bet you've already thought about the very first one, Genesis 1-1. I couldn't do, not do that one, you know. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God. Let's stop right there without even finishing that verse. In the beginning, God. This tells us God has always existed right out of the first four words of scripture. It tells us he must be our creator. Next, we see he created the heavens and the earth. He is the creator of all. Let's look at Psalm 139, 13. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. When you feel worthless, go to this verse. We see that God's character goes into the creation of every person. Through his son, Jesus Christ, we are given the Holy Spirit to work in each of us. Our maker sees us in a way that no other can. Ladies, soak in that place. Now let's look at Revelation 3.14. We are in the book of Revelation at Bible Study Fellowship this year, and man, do I learn new things every single week. Let's look at Revelation 3.14. These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I wanted to use this verse to show you how attributes can show up in places that you might not expect them. This is the opening verse of the church of Laodicea. This church needed to hear that God was the creator of all creation. You see, they were wealthy and prosperous, and the church had gotten off track, and they were caught up in their own self-sufficiency and the material world. Wow, does that hit home or what? They were worshiping the riches. They were worshiping the creation and not the creator of the creation. They were spiritually poor. So we see a sample of who God is as creator in these verses, in this definition. We can also see who we are. What do these verses say about us in relation to our creator? Well, in the Genesis verse, we see that he created us. In the Psalms, he created us in his image. He is intentional and detailed in each one of us. In the Revelation verse, we see he rules over all. We see his sovereignty, another awesome attribute of God. I'm sure you're saying, well, how does this change my thinking? How can this be applied to my life and my situation? Let me share with you the place that God took me once he introduced me to the magnificence of his attributes. He took me to the bottom of the cross on my knees looking up at him. You see, it was a posture toward God that I have been neglectful of. I had no reverence for him and who he was. So he took me to my knees and he showed me where I need to stay. 
I start my prayers now with the adoration of who he is first before I move on in my prayers. It keeps my eyes vertical toward him rather than getting caught up in the horizontal world around me. For example, this might be what a, a prayer starting with creator as your attribute might sound like if you just took it from those verses we just covered. You are my creator. You always existed. You created everything, including the heavens and the earth. You created my inmost being. You see me as no other can. You rule over all creation in your perfect way. You are creator. Let me give you an example of how this attribute creator applied to me. Last February, I had a week of spiritual warfare. I knew at the time that it was Satan, but I was still questioning everything I believed. I had never experienced anything like that in my life. I called on God that is my creator, and I continued to focus on him as my creator and on the amazing creation that he put around me that was in every moment of each day. By living into that attribute of who I knew he was, along with prayer and the Holy Spirit fighting my battles for me, he graciously walked me through it. He drew me into his word to continue to point me to who he is. Let's look at another attribute. Let's look at faithful. God knows and loves each of his own, and he will do all he has promised. Care for and make strong. Forgive and make new. Protect and purify. From the beginning, he has had a plan to restore the world that sin broke. And God is faithful to his own plan. We know God is faithful because he sent his son to the cross to keep his promise. Now nothing can separate God's people from his love. He is faithful to himself and to his word. We can trust him to keep all his promises. Let's look at Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. This is a bit of an anthem for me. You see, I was introduced to this verse, these two verses from my husband's uncle when we were in New York and my child was two and he was having brain surgery and we needed this. We needed to see that these verses showed us his love and mercies are limitless and that he gave us enough for just each day. His faithfulness is abundant. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 1, 8, and 9. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. If we look at this verse in the context of scripture, we see Paul is writing to encourage the church in Corinth to stay the course. They are probably exhausted and weary, and they are wandering off that path. He's assuring them that through the power of the Holy Spirit, he will fuel them, and he is faithful to the end. 2 Timothy 2, 13. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. This verse says so much about who God is. God is immutable. He never changes. In all of his attributes, he never changes. So in this verse, we see his faithfulness does not depend on our faithfulness. In those times that we are not sure what in the world he is doing or what he's doing in our lives, we can depend on him because his faithfulness remains. Let me share how this faithful attribute has applied to me recently. My sweet dad passed away in March. 
He was healthy up until a few days before he went in the hospital on March 3rd and passed away on March 28th. It was shocking and a rough road for our family to journey. But God continued throughout to show us his faithfulness. Our family even referred to our glimpse of grace for each day. Let me give you a few of those glimpses of grace we had. The second day he was in the hospital, we had a nurse named Caroline. She was young and she was capable and she was an angel. And we bonded and fell in love with her. At the end of her shift, she said, you will not see me again. I'm working on a different floor for the rest of the week. We showed up the next day, she was there. And the next day, she was there. He providentially stepped in and said, let me show you my faithfulness. Another little glimpse. We moved from the first floor in this very modern, nice new room to the fifth floor toward the end of his stay. We walked into that fifth floor and I looked around and I thought, God, this looks like it hadn't been renovated since 1960 when it was built. I just couldn't believe it. I questioned why he had us there. You see, I thought this would be where my dad would leave this earth and I just was really put out with God about that. No more did I have that thought than I looked across the hallway. Five feet from my dad's room was a room that said inner faith room on it. And I thought, hmm, that room became our haven. It had couches and chairs and carpet and Bibles in it. We went there, we spent time, we were able to be with my dad 24 seven and be in him, with him in the last days of his life. I found out later that those rooms exist in that hospital, but only on the main corridors. This was the only room in that hospital that had a faith room setting directly across the hall. He was faithful. And finally, the last little glimpse of grace from him and his faithfulness was my sweet daddy. He knew he was dying and this was the end for him. But through that whole time, he was still compassionate and kind to everyone that took care of him. I could see how God was faithfully preparing him to see his little glimpse of glory every day until he was taken to eternity to be with him. God is faithful. Every one of us walked in here tonight with a different set of life circumstances. Maybe it's marriage difficulties, children's issues, loneliness, bitterness that life isn't what you had planned, hurts and pain caused from others, life choices that have resulted in deep consequences, busyness of life that has taken you over, the pressure of being a teenager in this world today, the list could go on and on. Isn't it assuring to know that our God is immutable? He is the same God of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the same God of today. In the messiness of life where we often find ourselves caught up in our emotions and feelings, we can stand on the firm foundation that we can depend on our unchanging God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. These attributes can connect you to your Savior, Jesus, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. I've even heard people picking an attribute for their day or for their week to just look for it as they walk out those moments of life, even in the mundane and boring days. I love how we get to share them with others too. Sometimes I will um, spend nights, my restless nights, doing my ABCs of attributes. I like to tell people about them. So when God wakes me up and I'm worried about something, I go directly to his attributes and I repeat the ABCs of attributes. And most likely I'm out by the time I get to O because I've got to do omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. Oh my goodness, yes, that's enough to put us all asleep, right? So anyway, I just would love for you to live into seeing it in your day, every day and every moment. These attributes are not the key, ladies. I want you to hear that real clearly. The key is that these attributes point us 
to our Savior and who he is and the powerful recognition that he is beyond in all and he is sovereignly reigning over all. Let me end with just my favorite definition of one of my favorite attributes, glory. I love this definition. Glory, God's glory is the total of all his attributes. God displayed his glory in the beauty and the wisdom of his creation. Throughout history, he has revealed his glory to his people through his power, mercy, grace, judgment, holiness, love, and every other attribute. In a world of chaos, it's great to be reminded that God is in perfect control and is worthy of our trust and our worship. So we see in this definition of glory that God is all his attributes all the time. That was a light bulb moment for me to see that when he is just and he's administering justice, that he is no less loving, no less merciful, or no less holy. He is all the attributes all the time.